Hey guys, my name is Varun from the Red Music Box. Welcome back to another video. I am so thrilled and happy to be filming this episode for you all. Now, before all the excitement, I must make this confession. I have been thinking really hard before filming this episode. In fact, it's it's early Sunday morning and I'm shooting this for a video that's supposed to go out on Tuesday and I think I'm already kind of a bit late. But the reason why that has been the case is I've been wondering how do I approach this topic? Now, there are tons of YouTube content already on this topic and I have been thinking and asking myself, is there a necessity to make another video or maybe a series of videos and add to the list that's already there? But after some time, I thought, hang on, every person has their own process and an approach towards this. And having been a musician myself for the last 15 odd years, you know, running a good uh, live music career at the same time having a studio and recording and producing bands here, I've had some learnings over a period of time which quite doesn't fit the stuff that I've discovered on YouTube. So I decided to make this video series anyway. In fact, this one marks to be the first episode to share with you all so that you guys can learn from it and hopefully avoid some pitfalls and mistakes that I have made in my past. So I want to title this video series Practical Steps for a Good Song from composition to mastering. Now, whether you want to call this a radio friendly or a label worthy or whatever title you want to give it, please go ahead because honestly, it's not so much about the title as much as the content or the steps that it involves. Now, before we dive into it, let's try and agree on one simple fact. Good music or a good song is subjective. You know, if you put a bunch of songwriters in a room, chances are that they may not agree with each other. They may not even like each other's music because we all are different human beings. We have our own different tastes in music. We come from different musical backgrounds. Now, all these things have a certain influence on how we perceive and what kind of music we like. Now, the reason why I want to put this out as a disclaimer, even before we dive into the steps, is there are lots of courses online that you will find which claims to help you write a hit song or write hit songs consistently. Now, the reality is you buy these courses, you go through them. I have done that in the past. Some of them are really good and they share some, some good value. But the truth is, if you're expecting that you're going to write a hit song right after the course ends, that's not going to be the case. And you may be disappointed because of that. The truth being here is that recording a song or writing a good song and then getting into mixing and, and all of that and getting a final master is kind of like halfway through to get a song to become a hit because there is so much of marketing and record labels and or even if you want to go independent and there's so many things involved after that. So it's really hard to say that, you know, um, how these videos, I mean, how these songs can kind of become a hit and which is exactly the reason why I've chosen the title carefully and I'm titling this as Practical Steps for a Good Song. I'm not claiming that this is going to be label worthy. I'm not claiming that this is going to be radio worthy, radio friendly, whatever it is that you want to call it. Have you ever had these moments where, you know, a song just happened? You know, maybe you were just noodling on your guitar or a piano, or whatever it is, whatever instrument you play. And, and somehow you came up with an idea and you, it was a happy accident, as I would like to call it. And, and you, you kind of start working on that a little bit. You're like, hey, that sounds nice, interesting. And you, you, you kind of take it a little forward. And maybe within a matter of a couple of hours at best, you already have a song. You have a structure. You might even have some lyrics. You have a good melody. And, and, and the choruses are flowing really well into the verse and the bridge and interludes. And you pretty much have it all. Now, if you just stop for a moment and think, man, this kind of defies all the logic you know, of planning a good song and thinking through having a process, having a step. And, and you're kind of wondering, in fact, if anything, this is complete opposite. It is unplanned. It is fully raw. It just happened in that moment. And, and you know, and what should you exactly do in such cases? In fact, I would say that if you're a kind of musician who has these kind of moments quite often, then consider yourself blessed and continue that process. Go by the flow, let the song just happen and unfurl as it's going on. Because here's the thing, the steps and the guide that, that, that I'm about to share with you is in no way a rule that's carved in stone. Because honestly speaking, 
there is no right or a wrong way when it comes to making music. Everyone follows their own approach. And this practical guide or steps is supposed to help you and guide you in case you feel stuck or in case you don't know how to go about things. And also these are more of a steps that I have incorporated or rather personalized and made a list for myself because I've learned from the mistakes that I've made in my past and I'm sharing them with you, hoping it will help you get by some of those pitfalls. Songwriting. Now, songwriting starts with an idea and works its way through until you have whatever you desire to communicate or to express through your music. Now, of course, all of us want to write really good songs. We want our songs to become a success. We want to go on tour. We want to sell the song and, and have it uh, listed on all the digital or platforms where we can sell the music. And we want to be called as successful songwriters and we feel like life is good and beautiful. It certainly has been for me doing that with my band for the last so many years. But having said that, there are moments where you're going to ask yourself these questions. Is my song good enough? Does it cut it? I mean, if you're going to wonder that it's only the amateur songwriters who face this, then you're wrong. Even the ones who are doing this professionally for a long time do have these questions. And these are questions that plagues every artist's mind. And the sooner you accept it, I feel it becomes easier. And the more aware you are, you will be able to find a work around issues such as this or questions such as this. Fleshing out your ideas. Now, this is a stage where you begin with an idea. Now, your idea could be a musical idea. It could be a, a, a bunch of words. It could be a, a riff. It could be a chord progression. It could be a beat. Or you could even be writing to a brief. Uh, or you could be writing, uh, talking about a certain experience or a third person view of an experience that someone else had. Now, whatever, whatever it is that you're starting with, you get the point. Basically, Work on an idea that you have until it excites you. Now, I really want to stress on you here because the truth is, if you are not convinced about your idea, then the chances are it's going to be harder for you to convince your audience. Before you feel convinced about your ideas, if you're going to start taking opinions of other people, oftentimes others' opinions can lead you into a direction which is not so good for your song because especially if the other person doesn't quite understand where you're coming from, then chances are they may not exactly be able to give you valuable, good, positive feedback that you need in order for this idea of yours to become a good song. No matter what you start with, you want to spend as much time as possible fleshing out your ideas because sometimes a song that you wrote on a lazy afternoon might end up becoming the song at somebody's wedding. You know, they may want to use that song on their most special day. Or it could become, or a song that you wrote with your friends on or over the weekend could become the worship song at your church on a Sunday morning. Now you have no clue about these things. How an idea can, a small idea sometimes can actually impact another person so much that it becomes a part of a very important, significant moment of their lives. So it's natural that you spend the most amount of time in this stage. Step number two with songwriting is do not stop with the first idea that you have. Now, this is a fairly important point to remember. Oftentimes, when you're going by the flow, you know, you have a chord progression. Now, that's how it works for me. In my case, it's mostly the music that happens first, and then I, I work on the melody and the lyrics, you know. So, so I have a chord progression, and I'm trying to, to play the chords, and I'm trying to hum and, and come up with a melody. Now, I may have something that sounds good. Great, keep it aside, and try to work on different variations. Don't try to stop at the first idea and rush through saying, yes, I have something, and this sounds good. Now, the reason you want to do this is sometimes... If you don't have anything to compare your, your original melody with, you don't even know if that's your best or could it have been better. Now, the other thing is you need to feel excited. You, you are the best judge. Trust me, do not go knocking on others' doors and asking, is my melody good? What do you think? I don't think it works that way. You need to feel convinced about your, your melody. You need to feel sure about your melody. You need to work on it till you feel this is what you want it to be. 
and then you present it to whoever you want to present it to after that because that conviction that you have is going to show up when you are so convinced yourself about your melody. Step number two is do not stop at the first idea that you have. Now, this is a very important thing to remember. Now, in my case, as a musician, I come up with chords first usually, or I have a riff. Basically, I have a musical idea and only then the lyrics and all of that follows. So in such a case, if I have a melody or a chord progression, and if I'm gonna to stick to that and not even try different variations or try another melody, an alternate melody altogether, I don't really know if that's the best I could have come up with for that song. So don't be too quick to move through the first idea that you have. Spend time, play around with it till you feel really convinced that this is it, you've got it. Now, now, now that could take a day, it could take a week, it could be a month or sometimes, I've heard some artists say that they've worked on a song for, for over a year. Now, that's like, wow, crazy. But, but honestly speaking, uh, it could take any amount of time. So be patient with yourself during this time process and don't rush with whatever you have at first. Wait till you feel convinced. Step number three, you're gonna hate me for this because this one contradicts what I shared prior to this. Now, the reason why I'm going ahead and putting this out is because I believe one size doesn't fit all when it comes to writing music. So you need to be aware how to work through these different steps. Like I said, it's not a carved in stone rule. It's steps to help you, guide you through your songwriting process. So step number three is do not spend too much time working on your music. <laughs> now, you may wonder what the hell you said, flesh out your ideas, don't rush with your first idea itself, try to experiment and see if you can come up with variations and versions. And now you're saying, don't spend too much time. What does that mean? What I'm trying to say is, there are often times we might be uh, victims of this ourselves or we might have seen other good musicians. Now, I it has, this has happened to me and I have seen a lot of really good, extremely talented, awesome musicians struggle with this problem too. Endless tweaking. They go on and on taking opinions. They want to keep tweaking the song. They want to keep making it better. And somehow the song never gets released. It never sees the end of the tunnel. It never sees the daylight at all. So that's not a kind of stage that you want to be in. You certainly want to flesh out your ideas. You certainly want to try and not stick to the first idea, maybe work on some variations and see what you can come up with. But at the same time, don't spend so much time with it that you somehow lose perspective and get stuck in that process and you're just not able to move out because you're just going on refining and making it better and better and better. And the truth is you don't even know what is better. What exactly would you call a better song? Because you're just endlessly refining it. If you have a good idea and you're working through it and you're beginning to groove and you're also maybe just about smiling a little, move on to the next step. That's kind of your clear indication that you're enjoying and things seem to be going well. Move on to the next step. Step number four is melody is king. Now, I can't stress enough on this point. You can have the fanciest chord progressions. You can have all the crazy time signatures and all kinds of song structures and soundscape layers and whatever it is that you want to throw in. But if your melody is not good enough, if your melody is not catchy, it's, it's, if it's not connecting with your audience, then no matter how you decorate the song with all the other things that I spoke about, it's just not gonna work. Your song's gonna suffer because melody is the single most important thing that your audience will catch on to. That's the first thing that they will listen to. Is the song melodic? Does it stick in their head? If they finish your concert or if they finish listening to your album and step out of their homes, is the song ringing in their minds or have they already forgotten it? Step number five, mood is everything. Now guys, having been a musician and working through for so many years, this is a step that I see often being ignored so much and so often that I can't even begin to explain how often it is. Like, I kid you not, it gets ignored all the time. Now, here's a very important thing to remember. 
when you have your chord progressions, when you're creating, when you're creating these harmonies and you're choosing these notes for your melodies and, and stacking them against these chords, you have to remember that, or you have to understand that each of the chords that you choose has a certain color, a certain flavor, a certain mood that it brings into the song. And you want to stay true to that mood. You want to try and understand, spend some time to, to, to see how do you respond? What, what's, what's your response to that? How are you feeling, honestly? Now, as I was sharing one of my previous videos where we were talking about live drums versus uh, 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 program drums or virtual drums for that matter, where I was saying that as human beings, we are wired in such a way where we respond to emotions. We respond to things differently. We are not like computer machines who don't have a way of responding and only take commands and reproduce things. We don't work like that, right? So we need to remember that every choice of a chord and every little nuance of a melody that you add into your song will make you respond in a certain way. And you have to tap into that place to understand how are you responding to this? How are you feeling? What, what is the kind of things that it's invoking in you? How, how are you led to feel when you're listening to these chords and, and these melodies? And what is it taking you to a certain place mentally? You have to try and, 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 and think about this. The relationship between the harmony and the melody, all the consonances, the dissonances, all of that that comes into the idea will inform you what the song should be about. Which brings me to the next step, good lyrics. Now, good lyrics is often a reflection of what the song makes you feel like. Now, if a song is carrying you through a certain emotion, it's, it's invoking a certain kind of a feel in your music, and your lyrics is kind of complementing that, and it's going in line with it, oftentimes, that's a very good lyric. Your song is just has all the perfect elements glued in really, really well, and that's the most important thing about it. Now, these are six steps that I would say forms a part of the songwriting process, which is, on the larger scheme of things, the first step of music making, songwriting. Now, under that, there are these six steps that I discussed. The first step being fleshing out your ideas. The second step being working through your ideas and not stopping with the first idea, like having working on variations and trying to spend some time with it. Third point being not falling into the trap of spending too much time and endlessly tweaking your songs. Fourth point being melody is king. So focus on getting a really good melody. Fifth point being mood is everything. Focus and understand what the mood of the song is. And the sixth point, let the mood influence and inform you what the lyrics of the song should be about. I hope these six steps is going to give you good enough clarity to work through your songs or work as some form of a checklist to, to, to see, it's to stack against your track, that, a new idea that you're working on, and you can compare it and see, are all these things kind of meeting somewhere in some form or the other? Are you kind of thinking about this? Are you kind of tackling through these issues while you're working on a new idea? If you're finding help through these, through these six steps, then you're good to go to the next stage of music making which we will discuss in the next video. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this. If you feel a content like this is helping you, then please do hit the subscribe button below and ding the bell so you're notified. Please do share the series with your friends because this is going to be a video series. I'm going to cover every single stage in depth as much as I can. So uh, it may be really beneficial, especially if you're a songwriter or if there's somebody out there who wishes to make their own music, have a go at it. Don't be so afraid of writing songs. It's quite fun. It's not as difficult as it seems. It's fairly easy. So uh, do not be afraid to write your music. Go ahead and give it a shot. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much once again. My name is Varun from the Red Music Box. And do not forget to create, play and record.